As you are turning your attention towards retirement, there are two main drivers that you need to be focused on when it comes to your overall success. The first one is investment management. Now this really comes down to all the different types of investments that you can be in. The second one then is the advanced planning as part of your overall wealth plan. Now the invest planning comes back down to a couple of key drivers, wealth protection, wealth enhancement, wealth transfer, and charitable giving. Those are what we want to be covering in today's video. As we're starting to focus on your retirement, there are a number of key elements that are ultimately going to drive the probability of success for you. Now, it is true that investments are going to have a big piece of that probability of success. So when we look at the investments, we're going to make sure that you are in the correct places. That's one element that you can be taken care of. And when it comes back down to that, what are the ways that we can grow the accounts? What are the ways we can provide income? And what are the ways that we can protect the accounts with respect to the investments? Now that's not exactly what we want to be spending our time on today. For this video, what I really want to be doing is focusing on the other elements, the advanced planning side, because when it comes down to the probability of success, making sure that the money that you have, the wealth that you have accumulated is going to sustain you for all of retirement, not only for yourself, for your family, and possibly even leaving a legacy, that comes back down to a little planning. And that's what we really want to be talking about today. So there's going to be some key elements to this advanced planning side that's going to ultimately help to shape your probability of success and potentially increase it to the point where you can be looking to make sure that you have a great retirement. So let's dive into some details here and let's really start to figure out some of those elements. The first piece we're going to be taking a look at is your wealth enhancement and tax mitigation strategies. Now this is a very broad reaching topic that we have here. And what wealth enhancement is, is it comes back to how we are going to be growing the accounts as well as providing income. Now that is saying that we're going to take what you have currently and prior to your retirement, it was all about saving. It was all about making sure we have enough money put away. But in retirement, it's a little bit different. It's about the income streams that you have and converting your assets into income streams. And more importantly, having the guaranteed income streams covering what you need for your basic living expenses. So guaranteed living uh, income. Well, what that is then comes back down to, well, very first one, social security. Now, social security is something that I like to start with here because of the fact that it is going to need some planning. And if you are retiring, well, we're going to need to figure out should you claim early at age 62? Should you claim at your full retirement age? Or should you actually postpone that and delay it all the way to age 70? Now, this really comes back down to a lot of different elements. First one, your health history is going to be playing into this. The dynamics of your family. So how old your spouse is compared to yourself. Who is the breadwinner? Do you have minor children at home? See, all of those elements come into play because when we take a look at should you be claiming early or should you actually delay in taking your benefits, we need to take those elements into account. And what we want to be looking at here is to say, should you be actually claiming maybe at a different point in time where you can actually claim more from Social Security over the course of the entirety of your retirement than if you had made some different choices. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say you claim early and then you are starting to get benefits coming in the door, but you are actually going to be living maybe into your mid eighties, early nineties. Well, just mathematically, you will have what's called a break even point. Now that point is somewhere between the ages of 78 to about 82, somewhere around there where it actually will be more to your benefit to have delayed claiming your social security benefit versus taking it early. So what I'm saying here is that every day past your break even point day, you will have claimed more in social security. So what that also means then is that you can minimize how much you're taking out of your accounts and the other savings accounts that you have built up over the years. 
That's really what we want to be talking about. Can we be claiming more from Social Security and taking less of the accounts? Or is it actually going to be more beneficial for you to claim earlier because of the fact that maybe you have some health challenges? Maybe there's going to be some times where longevity is not going to be in the cards. Well, to know that is actually going to be very beneficial and helpful. So spend a little time at Social Security. And the best elements that I can tell about Social Security is the fact that there's a lot of different calculators out there. So spending the time on this is knowing your benefits. So you can go to the Social Security Administration's website and figure out your benefits, what they will be like when you are full retirement age, whether you take them early, or whether you actually postpone and delay them. Your benefits are going to be there of uh, just of the number front. And then what we can be doing is using the calculators to decide when your break even point, if you're going to be claiming early versus claiming later, what, right where that will be. Now that goes back into what we talked about with respect to the overall wealth enhancement piece, because when we know what the best course of action is for your social security benefits, then we can start taking into account your spouses as well. And when we take a look at both of them in tandem, there may be reasons why we want to claim a little bit earlier for one of the benefits, maybe postpone them for the other benefit, or maybe we're going to delay both benefits. But that comes back down to the planning piece itself, like I talked about. And that is part of the wealth enhancement. So that's also part of the income streams that we've been discussing. And there are two other key income stream elements that we should really focus on here as well. First one would be the pension. Do you have a pension? That's going to be a guaranteed income stream that's provided from your company. But what if you don't? Or what if between Social Security and the pension, you actually do not have enough income to cover just basic living expenses? Well, that's where we can actually take some of your wealth that you've been accumulating over these years and we can convert that into some guaranteed income streams and by doing so the mathematical probability is that that's going to cover your basic living expenses and help to improve your overall probability of success in retirement so when we talk about wealth enhancement when we talk about these different income streams like i said it comes back down to three elements social security pensions and then that guaranteed lifetime income that you can be purchasing from other different investments. That's a piece of the puzzle. It comes back down to wealth enhancement. Hey, it's Nathan Crampy, and I create these videos because you are likely very ambitious when it comes to your overall wealth plan, but you know there's more out there, and that's why this video is helping you to create and look at your overall wealth plan as it pertains to the different elements that your wealth plan needs to have in order to increase the probability of success. We have more videos here, so like this video to help others find it, as well as subscribe to this channel so that you can be kept up to date with future planning for your wealth plan. All right, while we are on the subject of wealth enhancement, I get this question a lot, and I think it'd be pertinent to talk about it right now. Your mortgage. Should you pay it off right away, or should you actually just continue to keep paying it on a monthly basis? Most people want to come into retirement debt free. And so they have their house paid off, they have the cars paid off, they don't have any credit card debt, and life can be good. But that's not always the case. And most of the time, it's actually going to be more beneficial for you to have a mortgage, or whether you have maybe a second house that you've just purchased. Well, that comes back down to then the question, should you pay off that mortgage sooner rather than later? That's another key element that we can be focused on when it comes to your overall wealth plan and how to enhance the wealth that you have. So what I want to say here is that again, this comes back down to some of the planning. And what we're going to look for here is to say, are you actually going to be better off in retirement by paying off that mortgage sooner? So the calculators that you can be working on here, your overall financial planning calculators will do a very good job of showing if we take a lump sum amount of money out of your accounts, what that would look like and what that does to your overall probability of success. You see, if we take money out of your accounts to pay off the mortgage, that's great because we can take less out potentially in the future. The however is that we've transferred something that is liquid, easily accessible into something that's illiquid, meaning that we cannot have access to it unless we go to the bank and take out loans. 
loans are in the form of a home equity line, loans are in the form of maybe a refinancing. That's the problem. So this is tying up the money. And that may or may not be a bad thing, but what it's going to come back down to, should you pay it off or not, I would definitely take a look at your interest rate because you may actually have a very low interest rate that would suggest maybe we don't pay it off this time. Maybe we continue to keep those monthly payments going because that would actually be more beneficial. Or maybe there are some other extenuating circumstances that we need to be considering here. But the best thing to do then is part of, as you're designing your financial plan, to take a look at your mortgage, to take a look at what it would look like if you paid it off and what would it look like if you actually kept it going? Because many times what I've seen is that it's actually been more beneficial to pay it off on a monthly basis because the money that you have in your investment accounts continue to keep growing. So over the years, we can keep growing that wealth and we can take a little bit off the top to pay for the mortgage. If we need to take hundreds of thousands of dollars out of those accounts just to pay the mortgage and pay that off, well, it may not be worth it. But again, that's where it really comes back down to the planning. So I'm not going to sit here and say one way or another is going to be right for you, but just a little bit of planning can actually give you the course of kind of your, your thought process as to should you pay it off or not. Now, sometimes that means not paying it off, and sometimes you are actually going to be coming out better ahead because of that. Well, another element of the wealth enhancement piece that we've been talking about, tax mitigation. And this comes back down to all the other elements that we've been working on with respect to Social Security, the income planning, and your mortgage as well. How much money are we taking out of the accounts? And what's the taxation on that account that we're taking the money from? You see, when we start looking into the details here, sometimes it's not always right to take all of that money from, say, your 401k or your IRA account. Or it may not always be right to take from your bank accounts or maybe your Roth IRA accounts or Roth 401k accounts. You see, what we look for here is to say, how can we take some money out of your IRA accounts? Because that is the tax deferred accounts. So every dollar that comes out from there is taxable. When we take a look at Social Security, that's going to be taxable as well. And when we look at, say, the taxable accounts that you have, your brokerage accounts, the ones that have a cost basis associated with them, they'll be a little bit different. There's going to have some capital gains taxes. Well, if we take a look at all of those, we can start planning where we should be taking from. And if we can do this correctly, again, going back to some of the tax planning that we're doing, we can ultimately lower your taxes today, tomorrow, and, and in the future just by taking the money correctly out of the accounts. Now again, this comes back down to some of the planning. So this is the different elements of your plan that you should be considering when you're taking a look at where to take money out. And here's the thing, what's good for this year may not be appropriate or good for next year. So as you, again, are in retirement, it may change from year to year as to where you're taking the money from, the most appropriate places to take the money from, and what's going to be the most beneficial. You see, when we take a look at Social Security, yes, that's going to have a tax associated with it. When we take a look at your pension, yes, that's going to have a tax associated with it or your retirement accounts. But what's to say maybe we actually take a little bit out of your ones that have already been taxed? So maybe a bank account or maybe your brokerage accounts that have a very maybe low capital gains tax associated with them. Well, then we can start augmenting some of the income streams. And if we do that correctly, that'll again, increase the probability of success and lower how much you need to take out of your accounts just to cover your income and taxes. That's what we wanna do here. But this is a huge element of planning. So as you're going through, taking a look at the different elements to what's gonna ultimately drive your overall wealth plan and probability of success, come back to taxation and the best avenues for you to look at is to make sure that we're taking some of uh, the different buckets that's ultimately going to benefit where you're going with your overall wealth plan. Last element that I want to be talking about with respect to the overall wealth enhancement and tax mitigation piece 
actually does come back down to the investments themselves. Now, we've talked about the fact that retirement is taking money that you have been setting aside and growing over the years to transitioning them to income streams. But we also need to know where we're at in the economic cycle as well. And I call this the lead stages. So the Lion's Wealth Economic Activity and Development. Now there are four different stages and knowing what stage of the overall economy and inflation we're in will actually help to continue to keep improving the probability that you can either grow your assets during retirement or protect them when needed. So let's take a look at the different lead stages. So again, Lion's Wealth Economic Activity and Development Stages talks about the different elements of growth of our economy as well as inflation. Now lead one, that's the Goldilocks scenario. This is the best of the best. This is where we're saying the economy is growing but we have little or no inflation. Now what that means is that most different types of assets are actually going to do very well in this environment. So we can actually be looking to be more growth oriented because the numbers support it, the economics support it, the ways that we are looking at the different businesses out there, they're all doing really well in this type of environment. So that's where we can actually look at the different elements and actually say this is a reason why we could be a little more growth oriented in this type of environment. Now, there's also what we call lead two. This is where we have growth in our economy, but we also start to have inflation starting to creep up. Now it doesn't have to be a lot. We can start saying that maybe this is just a little bit of inflation or maybe it's starting to creep up more and more. But the however is that in this environment, we actually still can see a lot of growth of the different types of investments and the ways that companies can still really benefit from this environment. So it's not to discount this, this is actually still a very good environment and is one that economies thrive in. So whether we are in lead one or lead two, we can start to take on a little more growth in the portfolio. Now that leads us into the other different types of the stages. So lead three and lead four. This is the other side of things. This is where we're starting to see growth in our economy slowing. And that means a whole different element to the different types of investments that you need to be having in your portfolio to sustain the accounts, protect them, and still provide that income. So when we talk about lead three, again, the Lion's Wealth Economic Activity and Development Stage 3, this comes back down to what we talk about a slowing of growth in our economy, but sticky high inflation. So it doesn't mean necessarily significantly high inflation, but what it does mean is that it's not coming down the way that it should, the way that we want it to. Maybe it's higher than what the Federal Reserve would like it to, so they're trying to take some measures to counteract this. Well, this is what we call stagflation, and this can be very detrimental to a lot of different types of companies, a lot of different investments that you may own, and the potential for the overall economy itself to start really faltering. So what this means then is that we're going to take a look at some investments that are going to sustain and protect in this type of environment. And what we want to look for then is how we can transition some of those growth related investments, maybe to a little bit more protection minded related investments. You see, this is not a static type of investment that we're going to be going into for retirement. We still need to look at where we're at in the economy and make some changes accordingly. Now this doesn't have to happen every day, but it may happen oh, every six months, every year, every couple years. So you can see that changes happen in our economy and we can make some small little adjustments in the portfolio to make sure that you're obviously taken care of in that respect. Now the last one, lead four, is the worst of the worst. And this is where we have a slowing of growth, but we also have a slowing of inflation. Now on the outset, this really actually does not sound that hard and believable that that's the worst of the worst because we have inflation going down. That actually should be very good for us. But the however is we come back to why is inflation coming down? And it really comes back to demand. Most of the time when we're in a lead four type stage where we have a slowing of growth of the economy and a slowing of inflation, inflation is going down because demand is really starting to collapse. 
So we have whether it's housing, autos, whether it was uh, anything related to the food that we are eating or just the things that we buy from the store. If the prices are going down, it's because the companies cannot sustain the higher prices because no one is buying it at those prices. So that comes back down to saying that those are some of the worst places to be with respect to your overall uh, investments being invested into the stock market. And we need to be even more conservative in this environment. So again, doesn't mean we need to move everything out of the stock market. Doesn't mean we need to make changes that are wholehearted changes. But it also means that we need to be taking just a look into the portfolio and maybe taking away some of those growth type of investments and going into something that's a little more able to provide some protection, some security. That is what we finalize with respect to the overall wealth plan and when it comes back down to wealth enhancement. Now again, taxes are a piece of this. So if we have elements that are very high in capital gains tax that would be owed, maybe we don't do all of it. Maybe we offset them with some capital losses. And this will really start to help and affect your wealth plan to the positive if done correctly. So that's where I would definitely suggest talking to your accountant. If you have questions on what stages we're in with respect to the economy, if you have questions on your overall wealth plan when it comes to how to use this correctly, give us a call. We'd be more than willing to sit down with you and talk through the different stages and how those investments work in each stage. Moving on, we have talked a lot about the wealth enhancement, tax mitigation, income investing, things that we need for just growing your money and making sure it's available. But there's one element that we also need to be considering, wealth protection. You see, it's not good enough just to have the pile of money set aside for retirement or to have the income streams or to reduce taxes, especially if the money is going to be unjustly taken. And that's what wealth protection really covers, to make sure that if something bad happens, something unfortunate, that you, your family, and your charities, the ones that you support, are all taken care of in the event something would happen. Now. This is, again, a lot of times coming back to the insurances here, and one element that we need to be looking at with the insurances, life insurance. You see, things have changed over the years because obviously the kids are grown. We don't necessarily need life insurance for the schooling aspect or just to maintain the income that you had from working. Obviously, because you're retired, we're not going to be looking at the income streams in the same way. But life insurance is still going to be very vital to at least look at here for the future, especially when we take this wealth and we're transferring it into income streams. We want to make sure that no matter what, those income streams are going to continue for your spouse, maybe for your children, or if we want to leave a legacy to some of your charitable organizations. All of that comes back down to then how can we do that and plan for that correctly? Well, what life insurance is going to do is a couple different elements. Well, we can cover taxes with that. One tax that you may not be understanding nearly as much, the income in respect to the decedent taxes. Now, this is not related to the estate taxes. So while you may be under the estate tax caps or those deduction levels, you still are going to be passing on the retirement accounts and they still may have a tax to be owed in the first couple of years, depending on the beneficiary. And what life insurance will do is to help pay for some of those taxes. Now, there's obviously some other key reasons why we would like life insurance as well. It can be used as a way to help pass on wealth, maybe help to put more towards charity, give more to your children. So there's gonna be many different elements that we want to be looking at with respect to life insurance. But that's gonna be one of the main elements that you really want to be considering right away, if you need it or not, as part of your overall retirement plan. Okay, well once we have that then, then we can start looking at some of the different types of insurances that are out there as well. Second one that we really need to be considering what to do with long-term care. Do we need long-term care insurance? Should we be purchasing the life insurance that has a long-term care rider? Or maybe there are other investments that are going to be providing income streams for long-term care. 
You see, when it, we take a look at things here, the life insurance guards against your passing. Well, long-term care is going to be there to pay out in case you continue to keep living and you need additional support. So that is going to be vital as well because when we take a look at what the average long-term care just uh, facility is going to be these days, sometimes it can be up to $10,000, $12,000, $14,000 dollars per month that we need to be putting towards this just to maintain a level of care, have 24-7 access from a nurse coming in to help you. Well, that may not be exactly where you're at today, but we need to start planning for it. And there's a lot of different insurances that we can be going down to help with that. And the more that we can have insurance covering these costs versus your hard-earned wealth, the better off your overall wealth plan is going to be because we don't need to take as much money out of them. So remember, long-term care is going to be a driving force as to what we are going to do to help maintain the accounts, to use less from the accounts, and transfer that money, protect the money with the insurances. So long-term care, life insurance with a rider that's going to help pay out for that, and even some annuities will have those different benefits. But have a plan. That's what we really want you to be focusing on. Last element that we want to talk about with wealth protection comes back down to medical. You see, we've talked a lot about long-term care, some of the things with respect to that and the ways that's going to be and has the ability to actually take a lot of money out of your wealth plan. But medical can do the same. And when we take a look at what is going to be beneficial, first thing I would say here, use a broker. Brokers are actually going to be there to help determine which element is going to be best for you. Should you go into this plan versus that plan? Are you going to be needing more of a health plan prior to age 65 when we transition to Medicare? Or are you going to be on your company's plan as part of a retiree medical? See, all of that then comes back down to how much you're going to pay and what the coverage is good for. And it may be that one plan is not really that great for what your needs are. So that's where a broker can actually help to make some recommendations and help you to transition into a plan that's going to be very helpful for you. Now, when you turn 65, that's when you go on to Medicare. Now, Medicare is simple and is really hard all at the same time. It's simple in that we only have a couple elements we need to be considering. And it's hard because of the fact that we are going to have to, on a yearly basis, pick if that's going to be still the direction we want to go or if we need to make a new choice as part of different strategies for our overall health plans. Now what I mean by this, we have Part A. Now that's covered by Medicare because of the fact you've put in your FICA taxes over the years. FICA taxes would be covering with Social Security as well as Medicare. And Part A is your catastrophic care is what I like to call this. Now you also have Part B. This is where you're going to have to start paying for premiums on a monthly basis. Now that is going to take care of more, let's call it the family practitioner type of a way. So it's not this catastrophic care, but it's going to be more of your everyday needs, things that we're going to be going into there. Now you also have Part D, and Part D comes back down to the drug coverage and making sure that you are able to afford the drugs that you need. But there are the donut holes, loopholes, whatever hole you want to call it here as well, that it's going to be some money will be taken care of and some of those uh, health related premiums will be taken care of and needs from A, Part B, Part D, but it's not going to be all of them. And that's what Part C, or the Advantage Plans, what they do is help protect and close all those different holes that you have, the loopholes, the donut holes, whatever provisions that uh, you want to call them. But that's what Part C is for. And Part C, in a lot of times, can either be from the government side or the Part C especially, or the Advantage Plans that are more from the private insurances. And you're going to be taking care of a lot with the private insurances as well. So that comes back down to what your needs are. And it could be $250 a month, it could be thousands of dollars a month that you're going to be paying in the premiums. But what you're going to be covering then is based upon what your needs are going to be. And your broker will actually help you to figure out those details and to figure out not only how much you need, the correct coverage, and then what's going to be most important to protect your wealth 
and that is really what we want to be doing and making sure that you have the correct medical coverage as well. Well, I would have to sit here and say the saying is true, no one's going to get out of this life alive. Well, yes, we can make a joke out of this, but that is true, that wealth transfer is going to be a very big and key element to your overall wealth plan. Because as you pass away, we're going to be needing to make sure that the money that you have, the wealth that you've accumulated, goes to the intended people at the correct time. So what this looks like then is your estate plan, making sure that you have everything here buttoned up. Well, the key element that you are mostly aware of would be the wills, making sure that your will is taken care of, maybe your spouse's will is up to date. And what I mean by that is that this is going to be anything related to probate. So those assets that have to go through probate can be transitioned by will to the people and to the institutions that you intend them to be transitioning to. Now there is obviously a period of time that comes back to say that it's not going to be a quick fix, but the will will help with all of this. Now all of those other elements that we need to be talking about then as part of the wealth transfer comes back down to your wishes as well. So you have the healthcare directive to make sure that you have at least your desires and wishes taken care of if you are going through some very hard times with your health or maybe have the inability to make some thoughts and to talk to people correctly. Well, that also comes back down to the power of attorney. If you're not there mentally, you can't make the correct decisions. So the power of attorney is going to actually help to allow others to make those decisions on your behalf. Well, those are some key elements that you need to have in place the will, power of attorney, healthcare directive, but that may not be all. That may not cover, say, the, the houses you have, the wealth plan that you've accumulated and built over the years as part of the wealth and the different types of accounts. Having beneficiaries on your retirement accounts is going to be important as well to make sure that the money goes to your spouse, the money goes to your children, the money goes to the charities that you care about. See, that, that's part of the wealth transfer plan. And for the accounts that don't have beneficiaries, that's where transfer on death comes in. Transfer on death deeds for the houses. Uh, anything related to trusts can also provide those abilities to have and give money to the ones you care about without going through probate, without the hassle of the will, and can go to the intended people. Now, there's huge issues that we can be talking about with respect to trusts as well, whether they're revocable, irrevocable, whether they're going to be for income-related purposes, whether they're going to charity. The sky's the limit when we can start planning for this. But that's the thing, having a plan in place for how the money is transferred. And I would always suggest, start with the beneficiaries. Know each account, know how your house is going to be transferred, your autos, your property, that's all going to be very helpful. And if you need the will to talk through some of your stuff in the house, the cars, that's going to be one thing. But the beneficiaries on the accounts, those can say if it goes to your spouse without having to transition and pay tax on, that's going to be a huge element. Maybe you will have to pay tax on certain elements of that. And again, we can have the life insurance for that. So there's how your wealth protection piece comes back into the wealth transfer piece. But having that plan in place and knowing where the money goes, that is going to be the first step here. So just know wealth transfer is a big element, but you can really take care of a lot of it with the beneficiaries and transfer on death. And then use the other elements we talked about, the wills and the trusts to direct the rest. Now, up to this point, we spent a lot of time talking about just your overall wealth plan itself. But I want to really take a moment and focus on your charitable aspects as well. You see, I know charity is very important to you. And I know that you want to be donating money today, tomorrow, and in the future as leaving a legacy, whether that's to your church, whether that's to other charitable organizations that you really have uh, really like and want to help support, that is going to be a driver of what we want to be doing with the charitable planning. Now, here's uh, kind of the thought process here. There's differences as to donating cash versus property, uh, personal property. All of this is really something that you're going to have to 
really look into, but you can have, sometimes you can have some charitable deductions that are attributed to this money. So you can take money off your taxes. Other times we don't pay tax on it. Let's say if it's a qualified charitable distribution that comes from your retirement accounts. So it can actually lower your overall taxation or whether it's just something that we really want to be putting aside for and leaving uh, that legacy piece. So maybe there are some charitable trusts that we want to be putting into place where we may not get the deduction today, but we'll be getting it in the future. Or maybe our estate is going to get the deductions. So there's going to be different elements as to how we can be working with charitable giving. But again, since it's important to you, just take a look at it and know the planning behind it and how each account is going to be affected and helped by the charitable planning. As you can see, there are many different elements when it comes to your wealth plan. Now, how we can improve your wealth plan comes back down to the advanced planning. And there's big pieces that are part of that advanced planning. Now, because you've made it this far, I want to offer you a special one-on-one -on -one consultation. That's where we're going to look at where you're at today, where you want to go in the future, and see if there's any gaps that exist. We can look at those gaps and we can look at ways to help improve and close those gaps so that your overall wealth plan is on track to have a higher probability of success that the money and the wealth you have is going to last all of your life for your spouse's life as well as hopefully to have some money to leave as a legacy. That is what the wealth plan is for and that is what we will be covering in the special one-on-one -on -one consultation. So do me a favor, below this video is a link and this is going to take you to our contact page. Now this is going to be where you can input your information and then there's going to be a message box and in that message box all I need you to say is one-on-one. One-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. And what that will do is allow us to get in contact with you. We're going to set up that complimentary one-on-one -on -one consultation and we'll take a look at all the different key elements to your wealth plan and figure out a strategy that's going to be right for you. For more tips and tricks on different strategies you have with your overall wealth plan, click on this video right here.